the circumstances and numbers of the 1948-1949 Palestinian refugees have been dramatically distorted in order to delegitimize Israel. In March 1976, Mahmoud Abbas told the PLO newspaper Filastina Saura, Arab armies force Palestinians to leave their homes. On October 2, 1948, the London Economist wrote, the most potent factor triggering the Arab flight were the announcements made by the higher Arab executive, urging Arabs to evacuate, and that Arabs accepting Jewish protection would be regarded as renegades. On June 8, 1951, the Secretary General of the Arab League, Azam Pasha, told the Lebanese daily Al Hoda, in 1948, the Arab leadership advised Arabs in Palestine to leave their homes temporarily. Syria's Prime Minister Khaled al-Azam admitted in his 1973 memoirs, we brought destruction upon the refugees by calling on them to leave their homes. On April 28, 1948, Sir Alan Cunningham, the last British High Commissioner in Palestine, stated, a total evacuation was urged by higher Arab quarters. John Troutbeck, head of the British Middle East office in Cairo, said in June 1949, the refugees know who their enemies are, their Arab brothers, who persuaded them to leave their homes. Ismail Safwat, commander-in-chief of the Arab Liberation Army, said in March 1948, the Jews have not attacked any Arab village unless attacked first. The Palestinian leadership, for instance, Haj Amin al-Husseini and Hassan Bey Salameh, collaborated with Hitler, seeking Nazi support to settle the so-called Jewish problem in Palestine in accordance with the practice employed in Europe. On January 9, 2013, Mahmoud Abbas stated, we pledge to continue on the path of the martyrs. We must remember the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Hajj Amin al husseini The commander-in-chief of the Arab Liberation Army, Fauzi al kaugji a notorious Nazi collaborator, threatened in August 1947, should the UN vote the wrong way, we will initiate a total war, murder, wreck, and ruin everything. On November 24, 1947, the acting chairman of the Palestinian Arab Higher Committee, Jamal al Husseini, threatened Palestine shall be consumed with fire and blood if the Jews get any part of it. And Abdul Rahman Azam Pasha, the first secretary general of the Arab League, told the Egyptian daily Akbar al Yom on October 11, 1947, this war will be a war of extermination and momentous massacre, which will be spoken of like the Tartar massacres or the Crusaders' wars. Each fighter deems death on behalf of Palestine as the shortest road to paradise. The war will be an opportunity for vast plunder. During the 1920th, 1930th, and 1940th, the Arabs in Palestine terrorized their Jewish neighbors in order to abort the establishment of the Jewish state. They defied the UN November 1947 General Assembly Resolution 1981, Article 80 of the 1945 UN Charter, which included the Mandate of Palestine, which stipulated a Jewish state in the entire area west of the Jordan River. The, ninth, the, tw the July 24, 1922 League of Nations Mandate for Palestine, the April 1920 San Remo Conference of the First World War Allied Powers, which resolved to establish a Jewish national home on both sides of the Jordan River and the November 1917 Balfour Declaration, which was the basis for San Remo. In 135 CE, the Roman Empire renamed, misrepresented in fact, Judea as Palestina, a derivative of Philistia. 
or the Philistines, who were not Arabs, but an Aegean Greek sea tribe in an attempt to eradicate Judaism from human memory. In 2016, the issue of the Palestinian Arab refugees is dramatically misrepresented as a tool to eradicate the Jewish state. The Palestinian claims of dispossession fail every reality test. The next six minute video of the mini seminar will expose the startling misrepresentation of the number of the 1948-1949 Palestinian refugees.